So we just recently returned from our nine night sailing on the Celebrity Beyond over this Thanksgiving holiday. This is a cruise that I've really been looking forward to as we planned it in May of this year. Um, and of course we just returned home from that sailing and it was a pretty cool experience. One, because it was the longest uh, cruise experience that I've had thus far. Um, and uh, it really gave us an opportunity or really gave me an opportunity to experience um, the food, the entertainment, the ship itself, perhaps more so than the other past or the past celebrity sailings that I've been on. So first I want to talk about the embarkation and boarding process. First of all, the Celebrity Ascent was sailing out of Port Everglades for its first revenue sailing um, so far on the same day that we were sailing. So that meant that they got the new terminal, the terminal that was built for the Edge class ships back in 2018. So we were relegated, and I am using that word somewhat in jest, but we were relegated to Terminal 18 um, at Port Everglades. This terminal was created for the Oasis class ships, so it is a lot larger, I believe, than the Terminal 25 at Port Everglades. Um, and while it's not as flashy or new as Port Ever, uh, Terminal 25 at Port Everglades, I think because of its size, it perhaps handled the embarkation process a little differently than um, Terminal 25. And of course we could see the ascent um, once we boarded the ship from port, from our ship on the port side, um, and we even got to watch it sail off. Um, and there's a really neat uh, time-lapse video that I did of that process where you could see the tugboats doing a water cannon salute um, because of this uh, first departure from this terminal, or this port rather. Perhaps one of my favorite parts of the, um, the ship or one of the newer things that I enjoyed about the ship most is the fact that there are so many more bars. And when I say so many more, I think there are about four uh, more bars. So you have the mast bar, uh, which is on deck 15, I believe. Um, and I, that's a really neat one because one, it's not terribly busy. And I think our ship was at capacity on this sailing, which shocked me a bit. Um, and so I would often go there when I wanted a, a drink during the day. Um, and my favorite bartender, Shai from India was there. Um, of course, you have the bar in Ocean View Cafe now, which I also thought was really neat. Um, I'll be honest, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later. I'm not necessarily a fan of um, the cafe or the the buffet, rather. Um, but if you were happen to, if you happen to be in the the buffet, Ocean View Buffet or cafe as they call it, you could certainly go to the Ocean View Bar um, versus having to go somewhere else um, to get a cocktail. Um, and then, of course, World Class Bar and Craft Social Bar. Now, Craft Social Bar is a bar that I didn't spend a whole lot of time in, except that very last night. Um, I went one time and it just didn't seem to be my vibe. Um, World Class Bar seemed a bit more elevated, which also necess wasn't necessarily my vibe, um, but I really liked the two bartenders in this space, um, and they made some really, really good drinks. Um, World Class Bar seemed a little elitist, uh, at least for the people that were in that space, but again, the drinks there were really good. Um, and if they didn't have something that you wanted on the menu, they'd be willing to make it. Um, as well. They did seem a little cold at first, but I just think that's perhaps their culture and their nature. Um, they were actually quite friendly, um, and I saw that they, they were that way with everyone, it seemed. Um, as far as the food on this ship, um, so we did uh, four nights of specialty dining plus one, um, and the reason I say plus one is because we actually booked um, our first one again on one of the last nights because we enjoyed it so much. Um, so the first night um, on embarkation day, we did Rooftop Garden Grill. It's not something that I ever wanted to try before, um, but for whatever reason, I looked at the menu prior to sailing and said, you know what, I think I want to try o uh, Rooftop Garden Grill. We absolutely loved it. Um, I had the sliders in the beginning. Um, I think I had, I'm not even sure what I had, maybe a burger um, the first night, um, and the dessert was awesome. We had great service, um, and it was night. It wasn't very busy at all. Um, I was lucky to have been able to book, uh, we had two specialty dining package or nights already planned. And when we got on the ship, um, we went straight to get, uh, guest services and booked um, two additional nights. Um, and the food was just awesome. The service was awesome and the experience was awesome. We really, really enjoyed it. Um, next we had Le Petit Chef, uh, which is one of the ones that we had previously booked. Again, an awesome experience. I think I had the um, short rib or I don't know, the steak and beef wellington. Um, I really don't remember, maybe the crab uh, pasta, which I don't even eat seafood, but I will eat crab cake and stuff like that. Again, really good, um, great dessert, great experience. The servers there were awesome as well. Um, then the third specialty dining um, option is, was, was Fine Cut Steakhouse. 
Um, again, really good. I can't speak highly enough about this experience. I think I had the filet, um, macaroni and cheese, um, a few other things that I'd had before in Bond Cut. But for whatever reason, perhaps because it was just two of us versus about eight of us on our last sailing on the Celebrity Edge, the experience seemed a little better. And we actually sat at the seats that I've heard a lot of people complaining about. Um, so it's kind of the circular seats that face into the um, Grand Plaza area, which we wanted those seats. One, we thought they were kind of cool, but also we wanted to be able to sightsee and people watch while we enjoyed our meal. So again, really awesome experience. Um, and then the next uh, experience we had was in Eden. Um, Eden was one of the last nights um, that we had on the ship. We had a great server. Um, the food was really cool. I love Eden, that, that part of the ship. I don't know that I enjoyed the dining experience there um, because while I am rather introverted, um, it wasn't a place where you could really people watch or sightsee, particularly because our dinner was at the end of the evening. So it was really dark, so it wasn't really much to see outside. It was just pitch black out there. Um, and the show was about to start um, in Eden while people were already coming to the show to uh, get a seat, but it really wasn't much for us to see down there. Um, it was probably my least favorite specialty dining meal, and it was actually really, really good. I had the mushroom risotto. I don't like the texture of mushrooms, so I did ask them to not put the mushroom um, in the risotto, and it was actually really, really good. Um, and then I had the filet. The filet, I asked for it to be medium. It seemed a little more medium rare, which wasn't my thing. The flavor was awesome, the texture was not. Um, but again, I think the experience was awesome and the food was good, um, but I just did not enjoy the steak because it didn't seem to be cooked to the proper temperature, my proper temperature. Um, I don't necessarily want a steak that's cooked like leather, but I also don't want it to be mooing on the plate, which it felt like it was. Um, and then again, I said we actually had a fifth night of specialty dining which was, um, again, at Rooftop Garden Grill. Um, we enjoyed it so much. Um, I think we got a little bit different um, things this time, um, but the experience was just as good as the first time. Um, it was a little more busy that night, but it was still just as good, flavorful, and awesome. Um, of course, we ate in Cosmopolitan several nights. Uh, we ate in Tuscan one night, and then we did Cypress the last night of the uh, main dining. Um, Cypress was probably my favorite. We did, or I did, avoid Normandy. Um, I'm very basic, I'm not that elevated, um, but Cypress was really, really good. Um, again, I ordered a meal that I think would have normally had fish in it, um, but they did allow me to substitute a chicken breast for it. it was super good, we had awesome service in all of the main dining spaces um, and the specialty dining spaces as well. Um, I really did avoid Ocean View Cafe as much as I could. Um, except for going to get pizza, that's one of my favorite things to do late at night on a celebrity cruise is to go get pizza. And the fact that you can go get pizza and there's a bar back there now is pretty freaking awesome. Um, so we did that several nights. Um, I think I did have breakfast in Ocean View Cafe a time or two. Again, not my favorite thing to do, um, but I did because I didn't want to be selfish and not go. Um, so we did do that. And I'll tell you why I don't necessarily like Ocean View Cafe. It's a buffet. End of story, it's a buffet and I watch people do all types of gross things. They walk right by the hand washing stations. You know, they're licking their fingers, picking their noses, no telling what else they're doing, coughing, sneezing. That is the primary reason I don't like going to Ocean View Cafe. I think the food is pretty good there. It's again, the people that I'm more concerned about. And so my voice is a little raspy right now. I'm actually um, dealing with some respiratory something that I've been dealing with since about Wednesday um, or Thursday. Um, and it's now Saturday. Don't feel bad other than the congestion and the coughing and the sneezing and stuff. Took a COVID test, um, so I don't think I'm terribly sick. But again, I was on a cruise ship with, you know, about 4,500 people. I was part of a Facebook group and people complained, it seemed, about everything. Oh my gosh, things that were just so minute. And I'm like, it's a vacation, relax. And I'm pretty uptight and rigid at times. Um, but there, there seemed to be a lot of people that were entitled moving furniture, their feet on furniture, on tables and things, um, pulling chairs away from tables in areas where you were obviously sitting without asking if you needed that space, hogging chairs, things of that sort. I would say that was probably the least favorite part of the cruise. That's not necessarily something that celebrity can control or Royal Caribbean group. Um, it's just where we are in society, unfortunately. Um, again, I talked a little bit about service. I thought the service was awesome. 
were service a little slow at times? Yep. Did I see people that perhaps were a little less friendly? Yeah. But guess what? If I was standing in the sun all day dealing with some of these entitled folks, it would probably be hard for me to be super pleasant too. I think for the most part, everyone that I interacted with was super pleasant, but I can see how some people might be off put by some of the interaction that they had with other people. Um, and my only recommendation is those people that are at the sunset bar, the, the magic carpet bar, who, by the way, I only saw two servers, two different servers there the entire time and who they, they were always pleasant. Um, but the people that are at those high traffic bars, perhaps they need to be rotated into a cooler area every couple of hours or given a 30 minute break where they get to go inside and relax or something. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, because this poor girl who was at Sunset Bar just looked miserable. Um, and it was pretty hot and humid, even in November, but we're, we were in the Southern Caribbean. Um, but she just looked miserable. And quite frankly, I can see how if someone was off put by the service they got from her, it might have been justified. But again, you know, you try being in the heat for 10 hours a day um, with very few breaks, um, with a bunch of nagging drunk clients, you would probably be agitated or less than pleasant as well. The next thing I want to talk about is the entertainment. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot to entertain me. Uh, the few shows that we saw were pretty good. Um, we didn't see most of the original shows. Um, believe it or not, I went to sleep early many of the nights on the ship. Um, but the show that I really enjoyed was the Uptown performance. Um, so this, is, this was a group of three guys um, that did Motown kind of hits. I thought it was really good. Um, we went back and saw a matinee where they did some different songs um, and sat in a different location this time. Thought that was really cool as well. Um, so I really enjoyed those two experiences. There was a lot of live music around this ship. A lot of it is slow. Um, some of it isn't necessarily my flavor of music, uh, meaning it would oftentimes put me in, a, in the type of mood that wasn't necessarily vacation-like. Um, but most people seem to enjoy it. I won't knock it. Um, the only thing that I perhaps was very frustrated by was on the last day, um, there was this violinist um, in the Grand Plaza who was actually really, really, really good, but she was playing music that was just reminding me that the cruise was almost over, so it kind of made me a little more bummed or blue. But again, she was pretty awesome, um, the music that she was playing that day. So now I want to talk a little bit about the ports and the excursions. So we left out of Fort Lauderdale, we had a sea day, we ended up at Georgetown Grand Cayman. Um, and here we took a tender, and it wasn't one of the ship's tenders that I really was hoping to get to try, but rather one of the port's tenders. Uh, we took the tender to the island. We didn't necessarily have a, an excursion planned, and we got off and walked around for about 15 minutes. I was melting. Um, it was so hot. I had on suntan lotion that I thought, or sunscreen lotion, that I thought was supposed to be for dark skin. Nope. Um, I was sweating right through it, and I took a towel from the ship, and it looked like I was uh, taking off makeup. So um, anyway, we happened to see a guy that was offering some excursion and it did seem a little sketchy at first, but once we saw some other folks from the ship um, joining this excursion, we decided to do it as well. And it turned out to be pretty decent. He took us to a beach. Um, I think it was maybe $20 for us to get in, $5 to rent an umbrella. And we had a couple drinks, um, sat on the beach for a few hours. The beach wasn't the most beachy beach that I've ever seen, but it was still cool to get off the ship and do something that was relatively organized and relatively safe. Um, the gentleman driving our bus, I think his name was Josh, um, was really cool um, and relaxed, um, very informal. Um, and then he had a friend or associate who was on the bus kind of helping to point out things as we traveled to and from the location. Pretty neat experience. Um, the worst part of that experience was probably waiting in line to get back on a tender boat to get back to the, to the vessel. Um, and it was fine. Um, I won't complain about it at all. It was really neat to see the ship from that viewpoint, from that perspective. So down low on the water, I thought that was really neat. I got to take what I perceived to be some really cool pictures and video of the ship. So I really did enjoy that experience. Then once we got back on the boat or the vessel and we left, um, we actually ended up um, on another sea day um, before we arrived in Aruba. Um, and Aruba, we kind of did the same thing. We got off the boat and started walking. We probably walked for um, about 10 or 15 minutes, came back to the port, um, and someone offered a $20 um, tour of the, of the port island, and we were like, no, and we did our probably 35, 45 minute walk, 
and found that to be less than entertaining. So we went back to the terminal to see if we could find one of those deals. And someone ended up trying to sell us a $25 ride. And I said, nope, someone was offering 20. We went back and forth a little bit um, and he offered 20. But then when I said, hey, can we do this? He said, yeah, that's $25. So we ended up paying the $25 anyway. Um, so we did this tour of Aruba with this cool guy um, who is a native of the land. He took us to his elementary school, his church, um, and talked a lot about the island. He took us to the California Lighthouse, which I thought was a really neat experience. Um, and then he dropped us off at one of the beaches. I think it was the Eagle Beach. Um, and we told him we wanted to go to the beach. I think he misunderstood as us wanting to get off and take pictures for five minutes while he went to pick up a couple more passengers. So we had to wave him off, um, but he eventually, um, we figured it out. We stayed on the beach for a while, had a good time. He came back and got us, took us back to the ship. He was very knowledgeable and very passionate about Aruba, um, which I thought was really cool. And out of all four of the ports of call that we visited, uh, Aruba is probably the one that I actually want to plan a trip to by plane so I could stay longer. The next port of call that we visited was Curacao. Um, Curacao is one of those ports where we got off just like we did in, in Georgetown, Grand Cayman, um, just like we did in Aruba. We got off, we walked around, we went to the bridge, the famous floating bridge. We walked in their little shopping district. We went to the Curacao sign, took pictures, um, and then we decided, man, there has to be more. So we walked back to the port um, and tried to find an excursion. We found one um, for $25 uh, a person. And then we saw uh, a couple that we had met on the cruise before um, and we invited them, them or tracked them down rather and told them to get on the, ship, uh, the bus with us. This was such a fun experience. Just going over the bridge, um, we had a wonderful tour guide named Margaret who was a native um, she took us to one of the Curacao factories. We weren't necessarily interested in learning about how it was made, but rather getting Curacao and we had a couple drinks. Um, had such a fun time on this uh, tour. Super prof professional. Um, there was some back and forth between one of the patrons who wanted to go on the tour and Margaret. Um, they didn't necessarily trust her and the bus driver, um, at which point one of my new friends told them to get off the bus if they were that nervous. Um, and then they were just fine at the end of it. They ended up staying on. It was a great experience, but it was kind of funny watching their interaction back and forth. And then lastly, um, we came into Falmouth, Falmouth Jamaica. Um, my first time at all of these locations, by the way. Um, and as soon as we got off the bus, we made up our mind that we were going to find an excursion immediately. We weren't going to wait to walk the port or terminal ourselves and then try to come back and find something. We found something immediately. Um, and so we ended up deciding to do a river cruise on a piece of grass. Yep, a bamboo river cruise. Um, the name is listed here because I do not remember the name of it, um, but it was such an awesome experience. I am not an outdoor person at all, so I knew I would be a little cringed or cringy um, during this experience, and I was, but it was still a really, really neat experience. Very glad we got to do it. Um, that river cruise lasted for about an hour, hour and a half. What was really neat, but also somewhat annoying, um, was all along the cruise, uh, the river cruise, there were a number of vendors um, on the banks of the river who would throw you things like um, a version of a raft or a hand carvings. They would sell you beef patties, which were actually good. Um, they'd sell you beer. They, they were basically making money. And at the same time, I understand that this is their livelihood. Um, but it somewhat did distract me from um, the, the experience, perhaps toward the latter part more so than the beginning. Um, and one of the things that I think um, concerned me is I've heard so many stories about, you know, people giving you stuff in ports of call. And then once you touch it, they're like, you have to buy it. And then they name the price. And so the very first thing that was thrown at our boat, I was like, please don't pick that up. And of course, Daniel picked it up and he was like, $10. Luckily, Daniel wanted to buy it anyway. Um, but that was part of the experience and it was something a little um, nerve wracking to me. But overall, it was an awesome experience. After we left the uh, riverboat, our tour bus driver um, took us to a beach. Um, the beach was interesting. Um, it was probably the first time in the entire cruise that I publicly took my shirt off. I'm not confident in my body build right now, um, but I was forced to take my shirt off and had a good time. The flip side of that is, I actually got heat rash on the back of my arms and my neck. Um, so 
I am dealing with that. It's not that bad, I promise. But still dealing with that. Overall, an awesome experience. I really, really enjoyed uh, this trip and those excursions, even though they weren't necessarily excursions that we booked through the cruise line. I'm not paying those prices. Overall, we had an awesome experience. And even though I got a little bit sick um, toward the last part of the cruise, it wasn't enough to make me not enjoy the cruise or to negatively impact or dramatically impact my experience. We met some really, really cool people, um, got to do some things that are way outside of my comfort zone, like the Bamboo River Cruise. Um, got to go to four different countries, places that I'd never been before. And of course we got to do it on Celebrity Cruises, which is my absolute favorite. I really, really love the experience. Um, I love so many of the uh, staff persons, um, like our housekeeper or our, our stateroom attendant. She was pretty awesome, Miss Jenny from Venezuela. Um, Shai from India, one of the bartenders. Um, just so many awesome people that work those ships. And those people work really, really hard. And so it's a little frustrating when I get on the message boards and I see these people complaining. They're spending their money. They have a right to complain. But Jesus Christ, it is a cruise relax. That is what I'm thinking. Um, but that's my experience. I think Daniel had a really, really awesome experience. And the last thing I will say is because this was a non-night cruise, I actually felt when it was time to get off the boat or the ship that I was ready to get off the ship, right? I was looking forward to coming home and not that I didn't enjoy the experience, but it was long enough for me to feel like I got a good rest and peaceful vacation that I got to go away. Our last cruise, which was last November, we stayed two nights in Fort Lauderdale and then we had four nights on the ship. The time itself was decent, six nights away from home, but man, I was just not ready to get off the ship when we got off the ship. So this was the perfect length and I think going forward, I want my cruises to be seven nights or more. So between seven and 10 nights, I think, or imagine would be an ideal cruise. Although I do want to try a transatlantic in the next year or two. Anyway, I am going to share some more video, um, perhaps some more video of the excursions uh, without me voicing over anything like that um, and some experiences around this ship. Thanks for watching.